Hey everyone, welcome back to Where Are They Now? We are going back in time to February 2017, which was a day shorter back then. So let's hop in. I have printed out the description box and we're just gonna run through the list. I have tried to recreate the makeup look and what I was wearing from that day with some tweaks. So here we go. Starting from the top, a favorite from February 2017 was my Kindle Paperwhite, which as you can see is out of battery currently. Haven't used it in a while. I still absolutely love it. I only pull it out when I'm sitting outside to read, which since it's been winter time, hasn't happened recently. Most of the time when I am reading, I haven't read a, a real book with paper printed in ages. I usually read on my iPad. I have a mini iPad. I'm not sure what iteration this is. It's in a, I love my case. It's a spec case. It has a little latch here so it doesn't flap open when it's in a bag or something. And I just read on the Kindle app. So there's the app. So it looks like that. I have it set up so it's black background with white print, a little easier to read, especially at night. And this is what I usually read with in bed because I can also sort of see texts and notifications as they come in. Probably would be easier not to have those distractions. But anyway, the reason why I prefer this for reading outside or in sunlight is because there's no glare on this. It does light up, so I can read it in bed or in low light if I want to, but I do prefer having all the capabilities of this guy. Now, there are even newer versions of this since 2017. They have come out with a waterproof version, which is really exciting. Can I justify buying another one? Probably not. But if for some reason this should die, I will get a new one and I will go for the waterproof one. I don't have the 3G version or you know cellular. I do just have Wi-Fi capability. Pretty much everywhere that I would go, I can load up my books like in a hotel room or at home via Wi-Fi. And then when I'm out and about, I have everything I need right here. Okay, next was the book series, the Rivers of London book series. Absolutely still a favorite. Since then, at least one, if not two books have been released. So if you haven't read that series, it is a science fiction or fantasy book series set in present day London. Sort of like a Harry Potter has grown up and there is a magic police academy and a magic police force that polices the supernatural world of London that normal people are not aware of. Very few people are not aware of. And it's a grown-up version. There's, it's not for young adults or children at all. There's violence, there is sex, there is cursing. I mean, not graphic and, and uncomfortable, but it's just it's not at all appropriate for children. It's a great series, especially if you like London or are interested in England and the culture of England. It's, it's fabulous. Definitely go check it out. There's also graphic novels if you're into that sort of genre. I've never looked at those, but there are those as well. Another series I was into back in 2017 was the Big Little Lies book. It's not a series, but a book that was made into a TV miniseries and then a second series. I never did see that. I... Don't really have anything to add to that. It was still a favorite book. Gone on to like other books, many other books. And if you need some more book recommendations, I do have a couple of videos that I've made since then. I will link around here and put in the description box. And there's also a page on my blog with book recommendations. All right, moving on to other things like earrings. So in 2017, I was wearing these big, well, you'll see the screenshot. I was wearing these big earrings from Bobble Bar. We've talked about this before, but let me talk about it again. It's not that I don't like Bobble Bar anymore. I do still like Bobble Bar, actually, for some very specific things. I still think if you're looking for a statement necklace, they kill it. I have not been able to find anything quite like what they carry as far as statement necklaces go anywhere else. But they've really cut back on their inventory. They've cut back on what they offer as far as the big, fun necklaces. So. I don't order as much from them anymore there. That being said, I'm still really loving my Amazon stuff. These I picked up in my most recent Amazon jewelry haul. They're fun, they're cheap, they're trendy, and when the trend is over, I'm not too upset that I spent, I think, what were these, like $10 or less? So there you go. All right, moving along to some skincare. Back in February 2017, I was big on two skincare items from Aveda. It was eye cream and basically a daily moisturizer and they were great and it's not that I don't like them anymore but you know how this game works we move on to the next shiny pretty thing and in this case I moved back what did I do with it there we go 
to some old favorites. So I loved the Aveda Tulasara wedding mask. I, that's all I wrote. I think it was the wedding eye mask, which is really just an eye cream and it was nice. But when I used it up, I really, I still like my Colleen Rothschild complete eye cream. It's what I always go back to. And mine is almost out again, love it. So as you can see, it is well loved and well used. And then I also liked the accompanying, they called it just wedding mask. It was a daily moisturizer. And I do love the Colleen Rothschild uh, daily, no, what is it called? Sheer Renewal Cream. But uh, through the winter, as I've been using Retin-A, I felt like I needed just a little more moisturizer, but not as heavy as her Extreme Recovery Cream. So during the day, I've been using the CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. There it is. I'm not using Studio Lights, but the sun is bright again. Finally, yay. I'll hold it back here so you can see it a little bit better. This is the same stuff that's in the big tub. It's just a lot more travel friendly and I like the idea of not having to keep dipping my fingers in a big tub. This is what I've been using during the day, mixing it up a little bit. Now let's talk makeup. I think that's what we're all really here for. A favorite in 2017 was the Shiseido Synchro Skin Glow. Back then I was wearing it in N2. It was sent to me in PR and they also sent me N1. I have to admit, and in the I've used it up. I used up the whole bottle of N2, and then this I kind of set aside because it's a little too light for me. I am wearing it today, mixed with the next favorite back from 2017. We'll get to that in a minute. And I kept saying, I'm gonna repurchase that. I'm gonna repurchase that. I loved it so much. And you know, more new foundations will come out. I keep buying new stuff. New stuff was sent to me, and in the back of my head, I kept saying, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go get. I'm, I gotta go buy it. It's actually sitting in my cart in my Nordstrom, you know, on the website. And then uh, Shiseido released a new, the kind of new version of this, and I wanted to get that, but they were always sold out of the color that I wanted. Well, it's kind of funny. So I pulled this out, and and I put it on, and I put it on the same way that I did, I think, in the video from two years ago. I mixed it with the other favorite. I mixed it with a little bit of the It Cosmetics CC Plus Cream, this one in light, because the N1's a little too light, this is a little too dark. I don't love, I don't love it anymore. I don't love it as much as I did back then. It's not, okay, granted it's two years old, so that may have something to do with it, but it doesn't cover like I remember it covering. It's not sitting on my skin the way I remember it sitting on my skin. Now I'm using different skincare. I'm older, so is the foundation. So that may be it, but currently my favorite more glowy foundation is the Wander Nude Illusion Foundation. You've heard me talk about this forever. I just think it's beautiful. It's more full, it's more medium coverage than the Synchro Skin Glow. And then as far as a CC or BB cream, I really like the, um, this new one that I picked up in a recent, it's a Walmart haul. It's the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream. I have it in the shade number 21 which pretty much matches. I might order some more shades just to kind of play and see how that works. I kind of like this a little bit better. Skin needs change, skin texture changes, personal preferences change over the years. So it's not that I dislike the It Cosmetics CC Cream. It just doesn't get me as excited as it used to. We'll see. Maybe by the summer, I will change my mind again. All right, moving along. So the Makeup Revolution Skin Kiss in the shade Peach, I absolutely liked. Cannot remember why I stopped wearing it, but doesn't matter because they discontinued it, so I can't wear it anymore. What I currently love that is very similar is the Maybelline Master Chrome Metallic Highlighter in the shade Rose Gold that my camera doesn't like. And I am wearing it, I wear it all the time, and I'm wearing it right now. Look at that shine. It's beautiful. It's a lot easier to find than the Makeup Revolution too. So everywhere they sell Maybelline, pretty much. There it is. Also discontinued and loved was the Tarte Tartus Contour Palette. I used it on my eyes, really, not anywhere else. Love it, loved the concept. Just all matte, pretty much neutral shades that you could put on your eyes. A similar concept, missing that rosy pink blush color that I never used anyway is the e.l.f. contour palette. That's what I've used on my eyes today. And basically just did first this lighter brown tan color with a big crease fluffy brush, then this deeper shade with a more defined crease brush and padded these two colors on the lid. 
So same concept, but that initial tar Tardis contour palette was awesome. Loved it. A similar concept you could use, less complicated, is this one from NYX. Just a little less layering happening there. Another favorite, still a favorite, is the Flower Beauty Powder, what is it? Flower Pots Powder Blush in Warm Hibiscus. I love this, wearing it today. If you like NARS Orgasm, you'll like this even better, and you will like how much it costs even better. And I think the packaging on this is actually prettier than the NARS one. And it's just this glow, there's no glitter in it. Orgasm has some glitter, I don't know. This one to me is much more flattering. Moving along to one that I couldn't even find back when I filmed this video, so I knew there was no way I was gonna find it now. It's the CoverGirl, it's from their Queen line. It was the Cabernet shade. Gosh, it was beautiful. It was a drugstore eyeliner, which was one of the more appealing parts of it, it was the cost. But it was this beautiful, creamy, brown eyeliner, but it had like almost like a maroon undertone, maroonish purple, burgundy. I mean, it was just beautiful. Gone, the whole line, I can't find it, it's disappeared. I love me a drugstore eyeliner, but my favorite one, I, can't, I haven't found a drugstore eyeliner in that shade at all. They're either too purple or too pink or whatever. Estee Lauder has one that's similar, but that's the Estee Lauder, so different price point. My all-time favorite eyeliner, period, drugstore or otherwise, is the Flower Beauty Vinyl Gel Eyeliner. It's a pencil, the name makes you think it's not. But the last time I looked at Walmart, it was on clearance, which makes me very nervous <laughs> that this is going bye-bye. I have recently picked up the Revlon um, Micro Hyper Precision Gel Eyeliner. It's nice, but it's not my favorite because it's so tiny and precise, you really have to take your time. You can't just like you can with this one. I like to not have to think about my makeup. This, you can just slap it on. This, not so much. So. If you know of a really creamy, easy to use drugstore eyeliner, in dark brown preferably, but also something that has that burgundy, more brown than purple shade, please let me know, I am looking for it. And then we move on to lipstick favorites from February 2017, and I loved, oh my gosh, the Wet n Wild Catsuit Liquid Lipsticks. What the heck was I thinking? Those were terrible. I mean, who likes that feeling? Now, I've heard they've reformulated them, re-released them, and they're much nicer on the lips. I'm just, I'm over it. I don't like that feeling. I do like, and I've talked about this before, obviously I like the YSL glossy lip stains, but those I think are also going away. Um, the closest I have found and that I do like, I have two of these. I thought I had three, but I accidentally purchased a lip gloss in this kind of formula, it's not the same formula. Looks the same, but it's not. Uh, it's the Lancome Labsolute Lip Lacquer. I'm currently wearing it in the shade Shine Manifesto. They have deeper shades, they have more neutral shades. I have one in a bright red. I think it's called Be Brilliant. Very comfortable on the lips, it's very long wearing. Uh, there's still some shine to it, but it doesn't feel like your lips have been um, saran wrapped and then freeze dried, so very comfortable. And then, I know I need to get rid of this, please do not lecture me, I'm aware, but I do love this. I, I, well, I guess I don't, because I haven't reached for it, but it's the, it was the L'Oreal Infallible Lip Gloss in Petal. Yeah, it's the eight hour pro gloss. And there is nothing quite like it. I realize that L'Oreal just knocks out of the park with their lip glosses. If you're specifically looking for opaque, lip glosses in the drugstore. Obviously, like Buxom lip glosses are kind of amazing, but those are not drugstore. This one isn't exactly opaque now that I'm looking at it, but um, they're very moisturizing. They have such an amazing color range. This is the perfect layering. Does it smell bad? Let's see. No, it still smells like vanilla caramel goodness. But um, dare I risk my life? I shall. Living on the wild side here. It's just, they're beautiful. If you don't see me after this video, I have incurred some sort of poisoning from my lip gloss. Now, um, a lip gloss, what I like about these, these are not sticky, they're very smooth. You have options of this very shiny, sort of sheer, but not quite sheer lip gloss. They have opaque versions. They're supposed to last eight hours. I mean, come on, no way. But they do last longer than your average lip gloss. I do love me the Milani lip glosses. 
They're close. You do have um, more opaque options and shiny. These are a little more sticky. You can see it getting like gloopy as you pull it out. You can hear it. Great lip gloss, let's layer some more. But uh, it's a different formula. I love Milani lip glosses. I own more of these than of the L'Oreal, but it's not quite the same. And I'm realizing L'Oreal makes some really good lip glosses. Good to remember. Okay, well, those were the favorites from 2017. Still a lot around, a few discontinued. It seems like two years is the shelf life for a lot of cosmetics. It's a short attention span these cosmetic companies have. Anyway, let me know if you were here in 2017. Were any of those your favorites? Are any of them still your favorites? Are you missing any of those? Let me know. Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.